it's a it's a week to week uh, league. We focus on this week and everything that we can do, and then you know figure out where we go after that. You know, we've had flashes of it, but we haven't been consistent. You know, so that's going to be the work that we have to put in is, is being consistent, being able to play our type of ball week in and week out. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by Seat Geek. I'm Mike Keith, and this is Coach Dave McGinnis. Due to the fact that it is an unusual week with the team leaving early for London, Coach Vrabel preparing the team. They actually had a practice today, starting to get some work in as you as you try to prepare. The team will leave late Thursday and land uh, six ish. London time on Friday morning. Well, they knew they, they knew this was coming up, so they had things prepared for this week, and that's part of it. Mike Vrabel has always been very, very good at altered schedules, and so this was scheduled out, and so you know the analysts and everybody was putting together some of the things, watching Baltimore film, have a lot of things prepared for the coaches, so when they come back in, they can go to work immediately, and so he, he's getting the, the, the players familiar with the Ravens today. Baltimore is already there. They arrived yesterday, the Titans choosing to arrive first thing Friday morning. Do you sense any any advantage or, or any thought about that in, in a different way? I've been over there six different times, Mike, and I've traveled six different ways to Sunday getting over there. You know, we uh, left like we're leaving on Thursday, left and spent the whole week. Uh, one game, flew to Detroit, played a game, and then flew from Detroit over there, you know, from the West Coast. So. I, I like it like this. I like it like we're doing like this. And I'm sure that John Harbaugh is doing it the other way because he tried this last time and got, got run out of town. He got drilled. Yeah, but yeah. the Titans, the last time we were over there against the Chargers, played very, very well. Just make a two-point play, right? Sure. So I like this a lot better, and it takes, it takes a lot of planning. But uh, as you well know, there's, there's things that we are doing, all of us that are going, to prepare our sleep patterns and our food intake and all of that type of thing before we get on the plane. All right, let's take a look at the six-pack this week presented by Seat Geek. Right off the bat, the Titans get a completion to Trayvon Wesco, his first catch of the year. Well, and what was, is nice about this, this was a three-layered route. Three-layered route, 21 yards, and it came off a of play action. In a three-layered route, there's two other uh, routes behind him that are dragging other coverage. And so this was a nice play to Trayvon and a big first down. So Ryan Tannehill with the fake, with the roll left, and with the throw to Wesco, the 270-pound tight end, for 21 yards on the Titans' first scoring drive. Nice block downfield, too, there, by the way. Nice block downfield, indeed. Let's take a look at the second sack of the year for Roger McCrary, the Titans' only sack in Indianapolis. Okay, we've got a, we've got a nickel blitz. McCrary's on the nickel blitz, gets hold of a big, big man. And the thing that I like what McCrary did here, instead of trying to dive at him, he wrapped him. He wrapped him around the trunk, up high, waiting for people to come in. This was, a, this was a big moment in the ball game, and this was a big, big play. Roger McCrary is a very, very versatile defensive back. And him coming from the slot over there, you can see they completely fooled their protection. This was a nice play by Roger and a big, big play for us. Loss of 17 on the play forced Indianapolis to kick a field goal. Third play in the sequence here for us. Ryan Tannehill with the screen to Derrick Henry. Watch this block. Look at Brew. Brew is downfield, and I mean, that is what I call a tater wagon shot. A what? A tater wagon. Tater, tater wagon? wagon? Yeah, you ever seen a potato wagon coming down a, a, a street with the Never wheels has. rattling? Because it's loaded. That's a tater wagon shot. That's a tater wagon shot. Anyway, it was a great, great block, and then the screen was very, very well set up. And again, when you, when you, when you're passing game downfield is working, then your screen game becomes very, very much in play. This is a nice, nice job. And the block downfield, again, when we talk about Brew, this is a really, really good job by him hustling downfield, Mike. Always hustling Aaron Brewer. Into the first half, nice play by Sean Murphy Bunting on a fourth and one inside the Titans five. 
to save points. Yeah, fourth and one, and this is a big, big play. First of all, we've got nice pressure. We've got hands, two hands up. And then what, what happens here is we have got two, two hands up to di distract the quarterback here. And then what we get right here, this play, this is a fourth down play right here. This surprised me, Mike. It surprised us in the booth that he was going for it, but the Titans were ready for it, got some hands up, caused the throw to be low and outside. All right, let's take a look now at Tajay Spears' first career touchdown. It comes from 19 yards out in the third quarter. Really a nice play design. Is a deceptive in the backfield. Fake one way, pitch it to Ty J. Ty J. Spears is just a football player, and that's the best thing I can say. He is a football player, not only with the ball in his hand, Mike, but as we're going to see later on in this show, also when he doesn't have the ball in his hands. But once you get the ball to this guy and he's got a little bit of room to navigate, you've got problems. He got off the tater wagon and took it into the end zone. <laughs> Chigakakwa with a good block out in front. And Tajay Spears with the first of what we all hope would be many touchdowns for the rookie from Tulane. Last one. Here's another good effort by Sean Murphy bunting to hold the Colts to a field goal on a third and nine. This is a big combat catcher in Pittman here that he's going against. Sean Murphy bunting, gave him just enough room, didn't want to let the ball go over his head. This is a strong, strong tackle. This is one of the better combat catchers in the league. And when I say that, it's physical at the point of a point of catch. Great job by Sean Murphy bunting by himself, forcing him back and not letting them convert. Sean Murphy Bunning has continued to improve throughout the course of the year, Coach. Oh, he absolutely has, and he's a very, very competitive player. You can see here he's got great length. You can match him up against the bigger receivers, and he's been a nice addition to this squad. Coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek, it's time for film study as we take a look at why DeAndre Hopkins is making such a difference in this offense. Two plays that will give you proof. Coming up next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show. Time for film study. Coach Mack filling in for Coach Vrabel tonight. And we're going to take a look at DeAndre Hopkins and why he is so effective for the Titans. It's because they can use him in so many different ways, and they do. Certainly did Sunday on the way to eight catches for 140 yards. Let's first take a look at a third down play, a third and six play, Coach Mack. Let's take a look at this play right here. I'm going to stop it just to show you. We're talking about Hopkins. This is, this is Hop. Here he is right here. Now, what this has done to the defense, all of a sudden you can see people trying to figure out how are we going to line up to this. And I want you to do this, Mike. Keep an eye over here on this player right here. Tajay Spears? That's Tajay Spears. And you would say, well, Mac, he's not very close to him, but let's watch. What they're going to do by putting him in here, he's got a chance to run. Now, they're going to run complimentary routes out here. What they're going to do, they're going to take, they're going to take Chig and take him in through here. They're going to do here to clear out over here to draw this safety's eyes over here to this side. And then they're going to work on these two linebackers back here behind the ball. That's who they're working on for this throw. Let's take a look at it. Coming out of the backfield, DeAndre Hopkins. Here comes, here comes Hop. Look at the move now. Watch, watch what he did. Watch what he did. Let's, we'll, we'll back this up just a little bit here. Now, I want you to watch. He is reading. He is reading these two people right here. He's reading them on this zone defense. So wherever they go, he's going to go away from. All right, let's let it roll. Let's go. Nice. There's your first down. All right, right, Coach, let's go ahead and take a look at the second play, if we could. Okay, the we deep, can. The deep shot. You're talking about Tajay Spears throwing that block right there. Thank Maybe you, just one little second. Let it roll one time here. Let's take a look. Thank Watch you. Tajay Spears come in here and throw a block. There he's trying to push the defender off of him. There we go. And then he, he flops. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the second play. This is a deep shot on second and ten. Deep shot, second and ten. This is a diamond formation, as Mike Keith calls it. This is a diamond formation that draws just like a diamond. That looked perfect, exactly, didn't it? Yes, Thank it you. Did. Okay, then here's what he's going to do. This is a transcontinental. This is a TRC. Clear across the field from numbers to numbers off of play action. Watch the protection. They're going to turn the line this way. These two are going to come over here for max protection because it takes a while for this route to develop. Okay. You ready, Mike? Let's go, Coach. Let's go. All the way through. A lot of time for Tannehill. A lot of time, great throw, great separation. This is the beauty of Hop. This is the beauty of Hop, what we see. Versatile, and if you're going to throw it to him, if he's open, throw it to him. If he's not open, throw it to him anyway. Good stuff. 
Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is where we will play coming up on Sunday. We've got an inside look for you. The epic Western spotlight is next on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by C. Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek from the BetMGM studio. This week's epic Western spotlight is to put you in the know about where the Titans will play on Sunday in London. It's known as Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But the big thing is, it is one of the most unique and innovative buildings in the entire world. Here's a look at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium with some explanation on the front end. Let's start with this. It's important to note that when Europeans mention soccer, they say football. When they refer to American football, they'll just say the NFL. And when they say something about a pitch, they're talking about a playing field. Keep all that in mind as we go. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is the home of the Premier League soccer team. Their nickname is the Spurs. So locals refer to the stadium as Spurs Stadium. That's what we'll call it since we're the home team this week. It seats 63,000 and it took 10 years to build from the time that it was first discussed until the time it opened in 2019. Why? Because Spurs Stadium is the first of its kind in the world as it was designed for both Premier League soccer and NFL games in mind. John Babs is the longtime stadium director for the Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. So we have a uh, chairman called Daniel Levy and a very uh, active uh, board of directors who wanted to create the best NFL uh, experience that we could possibly provide. So we went uh, all over America, we visited countless stadiums in America, decided that what we wanted to do was, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it properly, we want to enter into a real partnership with the NFL, put down a, uh, a purpose-built artificial pitch. The only way to put down an artificial pitch and not, uh, not hurt our turf pitch was to be able to move the turf pitch out of the stadium so we can then lay uh, a purpose-built artificial pitch for all the NFL sports. Again, a quick clarification for our audience. The football pitch is the field for the soccer team. The NFL pitch is the field for the NFL. And Spurs Stadium has both. We have three sections which are about 33 meters wide each by 110 meters long. They're effectively three large trains. They run on tracks, they're electric motors, and they, I think each one weighs about 3,000 tons each. It takes us about 25 minutes to roll them out of the stadium and unearth. And the atmosphere for NFL games in Tottenham is outstanding by design. We close the majority of the roads early so we can get a, uh, an extended fan zone around the outside of the stadium. We have a lot of attractions outside. We encourage people to come in early and really enjoy the day. When they're in here, the stadium works actually probably better for the NFL games than it does our own football games because when we hold football games, we have some legislation which stops people drinking alcohol in view of the pitch. For the NFL, that legislation isn't in place. We try to really maximize the space itself. We're really proud of it. They should be really proud of it. Outstanding facility. Wow. It is the official home of the NFL in London through 2029 because of that design. The other thing too, coach, it has a 65 meter bar. The longest bar in all of Europe. And it has a <laughs> brewery that is attached to the stadium. There are a lot of things that go with the stadium. You can, you can do climbs and different things but it has a 65 meter long bar. I've coached games in Wembley. I've coached games in Twickenham. This is impressive. Oh, this is impressive. And I'm going to go look at the bar. I'm too. Okay, good. We'll go together. We'll go together. We could certainly <laughs> do that. But uh, the Titans excited to play there again to repeat the Titans are the home team, which is something that's very exciting. A lot of people are going over from this part of the world. Weather forecast right now is mid 50s with a possibility of a little light rain that can certainly change. I'm told bring a raincoat, bring layers uh, because it could be kind of windy. Last time we were over there it was very hot. They call that a soft rain over there. A Mike. soft rain. It's a soft rain. We'll be fine. Is that right? Yeah, we'll be good. How do you know that? I've been over there a lot, <laughs> quite a bit. More coming up, including kids ask Coach Mack. 
questions. <laughs> yeah, not just for Vrabel, for Coach Mack. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek from the Bet MGM Studio. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek from the Bet MGM Studio. Coach Dave McGinnis is sitting in for Mike Vrabel tonight on what is an unusual week for the Titans as the team will be leaving for London on Thursday. We come to the point in the show that Mike Vrabel likes the best. This is kids ask Coach Vrabel, but for you, specially designed as the permanent fill-in host of the show, kids <laughs> ask Coach Mack. Let's hit it, please. Savannah, first of all, great question. And Savannah, tighten up. Keith Bullock. Keith Bullock was your favorite? Keith Bullock was my favorite. Of course, I'm partial to linebackers, but Keith, Keith Bullock, I coached Hall of Fame linebackers. Keith Bullock would fit in with that group. Not only a really good football player, but he was a great Titan and a great human being, Savannah. So if you can get a Keith Bullock jersey, get one. I think he may be going to London, I hear. He should be. As well he should. Anywhere the Titans are, Bullock should be. All right, so let me ask you this. Who is your favorite Titan who was not one of your linebackers when you were coaching? CJ2K. Chris Johnson. CJ2K. CJ2K was – he was really a delight to be around yeah. in the building. He really was. And then he was really a lot of fun to be around when that ball was in his hand. So, CJ2K. He's going to be back. We've got homecoming coming up in just a couple of weeks. That Can't we're wait. Very, very excited about I, the list of players coming back for homecoming for the Atlanta game when the team puts on the Oilers uniforms. Oh, wow. and yes. It's, it, I mean, it's going to be a fantastic weekend. We are so excited. But seeing CJ back with Lendell White – and Bo Scaife and Vince Young and seeing all those guys together, they kind of run the whole show. Amy Adams Strunk does such a great job with our alumni. It's outstanding. All right. When we come back, it's time for Coach Max Keys to Success, the Nissan Keys to Success. That's up next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Mike Vrabel's show, presented by Seat Geek, is ready to move into the keys portion of our program, the Nissan Keys to Success. Coach Dave McGinnis, you say key number one is play great run defense against Lamar Jackson. You're going to have to plus one it. Plus one it with mobile quarterbacks, and if you plus one it, everybody's got to be gap solid. You hear Mike Vrabel talk all the time about setting an edge and building a wall. When you're playing plus one, somebody's responsible for the quarterback on scheduled runs, which this guy's going to do. So what we have to be able to do, Mike, we have to be able to play gap sound defense across that wall. No cracks in the wall against this guy. Why is Jackson such a great runner? Well, because he's got speed and also he's got some moves to him. He's got some wiggle and he can eat up stripes really, really quick. And he's very, very instinctive as far as about, especially on those option plays, reading where he should go. All right. Key number two in the Nissan Keys to Success listing, eliminate explosive plays on defense. Well, we've talked about, we talked about uh, Jackson running. Let's talk about him throwing. He's throwing the ball better than I've ever seen him throw, and I've watched him his whole career. He's throwing the ball really well. Last week, his receivers dropped nine passes, Mike. We can't count on that. We've got to knock the passes out of their hands, but he is throwing the ball, and this, this new offense that he's in is very well suited to what he can do off of play action, and he's also throwing from the cylinder. So explosive plays, we cannot let the ball go over our head, or we cannot afford missed tackles on the perimeter. has to be like Cincinnati where the longest play you give up is 17 yards. It has to be exactly like that. All right. So the final key is about the Titans' offense, and that's – Touchdowns in the red zone, and this has been a huge problem for this ball club so far in 2023, on the road especially, even though this is technically a home game. Well, and this is coming straight from the head coach because I listen to what the head coach says because it, it's important, and this is important. We're moving the ball down in the red zone, but you've got to score touchdowns in the red zone. In the National Football League, it's hard to move the ball, but once you get in the red zone, you've got to manufacture a touchdown somehow. You can kick a field goal every once in a while, but you can't lean on it. We need to score touchdowns in the red zone in London. Yeah, Nick Folk right now, 13 field goals. He's kicked just seven extra points. You'd like to have that reversed. Reverse it, Mike. Reverse it. All right, so you ready to go to London? Mike Keith. 
as soon as this came out that they said we're going to London, I'm ready. I mean, I've already got so many people set up over there that want to meet you that we're going to have a great time. At the Admiralty, I think is the name of the place. And is it bet? No, it's Admiralty. Admiralty, okay. I think, is where we're going. That's the official Titans hangout in Trafalgar Square. Coach and I will be there Saturday night. And the 65-meter bar. And the 65-meter bar. <laughs> we'll also be on the radio, of course, on <laughs> Sunday morning. Kickoff time is 8.30 Central. And we're on the air with Titans Countdown on 104.5 The Zone at all our great Titans radio stations at 7.30 a.m. Central. So breakfast with the Titans from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Good job tonight, Coach. Well, this is so much fun. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks for watching the Mike Brable Show presented by SeatGeek.